Good folks joining. Okay, I think we'll begin with two minutes past the hour. So good morning and good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar session by Eclectic IQ. Today's topic is transforming cyber threat intelligence, and we're going to focus on essential tactics that can be applied in our threat intelligence platform to help make your CTI practice more successful. I'm James Collins. I run our uh, enterprise team here at Eclectic, and I'm joined by my colleague, Ben Webster. I'll ask Ben to introduce himself when he starts presenting in a couple of minutes. First, who, who's Eclectic IQ? So we're a pure play threat intelligence platform and services provider. We're headquartered in Amsterdam in Europe, and we have operations around the globe supporting our customers in large enterprise, mid enterprise and government. And we're working with an ecosystem of intelligence vendors, both in commercial and open source, and also cybersecurity vendors, uh, where we need to integrate those tools into our platform to serve the needs of our customers and the market. So the problem with, um, I guess, one of the big challenges in threat intelligence today is that, you know, CTI analysts and threat analysts are spending too much of their time reading intelligence reports, intelligence blogs and briefings and so on, and don't have enough time left to use that intelligence in order to protect the business and collaborate with their stakeholders across cyber defense departments. So what we're going to look at during this session today is how we can um, improve these four areas. One is how can we make collection of data more automated and avoid doing manual uh, tasks in order to gather source data and bring it into the platform. Once we've brought in that information, we're going to look at how we can prioritize the intelligence around what's relevant to our business or to our vulnerabilities or what's manifesting in our threat landscape. Then third point, we're going to look at collaboration itself. So uh, not only collaboration between CTI analysts, so analysts to analysts, uh, working on a particular intelligence product to make sure that that can be delivered uh, with uh, a mu as much efficiency as possible and tasks can be passed off to different experts within the team, but also analysts with their stakeholders in the cyber defense department. So an analyst collaborating with the SOC or with incident response or with the CISO office and so on. And lastly, um, how threat report products themselves can be more produced much more efficiently ensure that they have high quality and can be shared with the stakeholder in a timely manner. Before we begin, I'll just let you know that this is a webinar session is being recorded, so your microphones have been muted. So as usual, if you have any questions, please put those questions into the chat. I'll monitor those. And after Ben's done presenting, uh, we'll have a short Q&A session where we'll answer your questions. If we run out of time, we'll follow up with answers over email. So with that said, I will hand over to Ben to do the presentation and then come back uh, once he's finished. So Ben, over to you. Thank you, James. Uh, just to make sure you can see my slides and we'll make a start. Okay, so what I wanna talk through today uh, at a high level will be some of the use cases and features of the Eclectic IQ Intelligence Center. Uh, and from myself, my name is Ben Webster. Uh, I've worked with Eclectic IQ for almost six years, uh, and I've got experience with security operations and cyber threat intelligence in the UK. Now, as James had the slide up, I want to go through these four high-level use cases, and we'll talk through different features and capabilities within the platform. My goal is to help illustrate how uh, you as CTI analysts or your teams can use our platform to more easily work with and organize threat intelligence, collaborating to produce material and content for your organizations, or for those of you with mission statements like governments, asserts, and NCSCs, how you can use our platform to help you with facilitating sharing. I'll bring back this slide as we go through as well to talk through what we've uh, seen and summarize the different use cases. So first things first, I want to talk through collection. Uh, there's quite a few different ways to bring data into the platform, and I want to start with talking about the data model that we're actually working with. So what we see on the screen here is the graph tool for the Eclectic IQ Intelligence Center, and this is essentially the relationships and entities that can be created within the platform. Now, this is a mock-up that I've just created to show the different possibilities, the different concepts that we support, 
And each of these entities might be used by yourselves or by intelligence services to represent uh, threat intelligence concepts. So you might be interested in collecting intelligence data that talks about threat actors, malwares and vulnerabilities, key threats that you may be tracking to help understand their nature and how your organization can defend themselves. We also capture uh, technical intelligence such as indicators to help with incident response use cases as well as detection and prevention. And there's a lot of uh, integration capabilities with the platform to integrate with tools, so whether it's things like sandboxing for malware, SIEM, SOAR, or EDR technologies, uh, or even simple sharing initiatives like email. Now we'll come back to the graph with a couple of examples, and I want to talk about the primary collection capability, which is through uh, incoming feeds. And this is essentially automated collection from various sources. So what we see here on this page is a list of sources that I've configured within this platform. And this is a mix of both open source and commercial uh, sources of intelligence. So you may be familiar with some of these services. And if not, I encourage you to give them a look as these are all definitely recommended for uh, your consumption. And each of these may serve unique purposes. So for intelligence content around, let's say vulnerabilities, you may wish to subscribe to CISA's exploit catalog which will provide information on uh, vulnerabilities that they've observed being exploited in the wild. Other services like the National Vulnerability Database will provide a more clinical look at vulnerabilities. So the sort of scoring mechanism and the exact nature of each vulnerability. And these sources are typically used together to help understand uh, the nature of a vulnerability and then perhaps how it might be being exploited. For other types of intelligence, simple uh, RSS feeds or open source services like Alien Vault's uh, Open Threat Exchange, each of these is given its own line item, and every one of these feeds is configured to collect data automatically on a schedule. So in the case of Alien Vault here, we're running this feed every hour to collect any new information that we've subscribed to Pulses for. We then also have some commercial examples of data here, for example, our friends at Group IB who provide intelligence for a number of use cases, such as threat actors, malwares, and vulnerabilities. And in these feeds, we'll find details on actors, ransomware attacks, again, vulnerabilities and their exploits, and information on malwares and their indicators. For all of these feeds, every single feed that we collect data from, this information is all indexed and made available for search in the platform together with data that we collect from other sources as well. So still on the subject of collection, we may also wish to manually upload data, create data ourselves using the uh, forms over here on the left. This allows us to create models like we saw in the graph earlier, where we might create entities to supplement or model threats that we're researching. And just to briefly show you, show you the manual upload options um, to help support use cases where you're given intelligence on an ad hoc basis, you may have simple text documents such as doc format, PDF, or text files. You may have something like a CSV shared with you, which you want to bring into the platform. And in all of these scenarios, the platform will help you with extracting that information. I have, for example, a document here, which is a very simple uh, CSV and then a text file, both examples of intelligence that we would typically receive from, uh, let's say, teams within our organization or organizations that we collaborate with. This is perhaps a trivial example, but it's something I've seen uh, similar for in, in my experience. We may get an email from within our organization where they've discovered something suspicious. They might have some more detail and they want us to perform an investigation or look for any more detail and give it back to them. So in this circumstance, I could use the search tool to see if I have any details on the IP, or I could just upload my document uh, that's been shared with me and bring it into the platform. I'll select a few things here, such as setting the TLP to red, since this is internal, and we want to mark this as sensitive, and this has bearing on filtering and exporting data. And then I'll ask the platform to take that file and create a report from it. The report that's then been created will be parsed for any technical information, such as the IP address, MITRE attack IDs, and these will all be added as labels to the entity, and we can then explore that data further within the platform. In this case, we find that the report we've uploaded actually has a link to an existing indicator. And if I bring this into the graph to explore the relationships, we can then use this entity to see if there's any more information available which might be useful to us. 
In this case, we have an indicator that came from group IB. There's some additional metadata to help us understand its threat level or its nature. And it also has a link to a malware where we can start to learn uh, exactly how this threat works. And so immediately we have some useful intelligence from one of our sources that we can then discuss with our SOC and provide to them for further analysis. Content like this might then ho uh, help in future threat hunting activity or resolving an incident. Moving back to the upload tool, uh, I'll also briefly show the CSV mapper as this is a sort of unique scenario. Whenever we want to upload uh, rows of data, bring it into the platform. Once again, I have a sort of simple document here, which is a CSV from uh, URL house, an Intel feed, which uh, you may use yourselves. We can also automate collection of this source um, using incoming feeds, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to just show the upload as well. And so when we choose the custom mapping tool, we can select to, uh, once again, we'll set the override, maybe for a public source like this, we'll set it as clear or green. We'll choose to extract information and the platform will help me with parsing this and turning it into six entities within the intelligence center. So I'll select a few options specific to this file, and I'm then presented with this mapping uh, process. So it's now showing me each column and some examples of the data within that column. I know that this is the ID, so I can skip over this. And then I'll bring in, uh, for example, a timestamp. So I'll set this as start. We'll set this one as the title. And we'll add most of these other ones as tags to the entity, just to support any future searches that we might use. I can also save this as a template for in, uh, ingestion. This allows me to use it uh, in an automated way. So once I've created the template, I can set up an incoming feed to automate this in the future. And when we implement uh, the ingestion here, we'll be presented with the results of the CSV being processed. And what we now see is each row has been turned into an indicator. All of the metadata is now available as tags. The title which contained the URL and the IP address, this will also have been extracted for us automatically into its constituent parts. So in any case where we see unstructured data like title or description, this information is extracted for us automatically. And if we don't want this behavior or we want to implement things like blacklists, there's also automation features available to help us manage this behavior. Now there's two more ways to bring in data. One would be uh, the API, which I won't demonstrate in this uh, demonstration, but that's another option and another interface, which we typically see used for integrations. The final way would be to use the browser integration, which allows, uh, helps analysts with collecting data from sources that they're not already using. So for a blog post like this one, typical of an analyst's um, role to consume Intel like this from various sources, they may want to understand what knowledge they have around the threat actor or malwares or IOCs found on this page. And this tool will help them with both collecting that information and then also displaying it as well. So on the right side here, we can see uh, several entities that have been extracted. We can then select some of these entities and choose to bring them into our platform. So in this case, I'll just select a few of the IP addresses, one of the malwares and a threat actor. And here I'm going to choose to create Intel. This will essentially ask me to, uh, let me just try this one more time. This will essentially ask me to create a title and then bring it into my platform. Oh, it looks like my page is struggling. If this doesn't work, then we'll come back to this one later. I'll see if I can get this one through. Otherwise, I will put a pin in this. No, nope, I have been betrayed. So we'll move on from the browser integration. Um, we'll skip that one for collection for now, and I'll, I'll give it a go towards the end of the webinar. So with all these different ways of collecting data, what I want to do next is start to explore that information and bring it into the platform, help me with organizing it, uh, researching it, and then we'll start talking about things like alerting and prioritization. So in terms of the use cases here, now that we've collected data, whether it's from feeds or manual uploads or even intelligence we've created ourselves, now I want to use the platform to help me prioritize this intel, get it into the hands of the analysts that need to work on it, and track that effort as we do so. And so within the platform, 
we have a search tool which enables us to explore all of this information from all of our sources. Now, at its most basic, we can just use keywords. If we want to do something like a, a keyword of ransomware, this will just search through all the text of all the intel and bring back any matches. If we want to be more specific, we can start to include uh, different clauses. For example, I might want to focus on reports. So I can filter my search, uh, again, only to the report entities that have this keyword of ransomware. We can continue this process and add as many clauses as we need, whether we want to evaluate tags or MITRE attack techniques, or even timestamps associated with the data. The platform will also help us with structuring these queries. So when we're building these, the syntax is available to us and suggested. Here, for example, I'm querying for ransomware reports in the last week, and we have roughly a hundred results. And there's also some additional filters available on the left. We can also take advantage of uh, the AI search here to help simplify the search capability. For example, if we wanted to look for reports with a uh, ransomware tag, we can just ask this in natural language and the platform will convert this into our search query as well. So we have both approaches and this hopefully helps with learning the search syntax and also makes it easier for less technical personnel to make use of the platform if they need to. Interestingly, this also supports uh, different languages as well. So if, for example, you wanted to ask something in German, let's say we wanted to look for uh, threat actors with a particular tag, like country RU. This will then convert my query, uh, even if I'm using a different language. And this is especially useful if we're using uh, Intel sources that also bring in data in different languages as well. So it doesn't just support uh, English, if you happen to be a French speaking or Arabic speaking or from uh, Asia Pacific region and you want to use native intelligence from those regions, the search tool will also support this. Now, since we're on the subject of prioritization, we want to be able to notify and alert on key intelligence that matches these searches. So to do this, we have a dedicated feature called discovery. Discovery is essentially an alert capability where we can define a search as an alert and then be notified when there are new results. A simple example here would be a search that we've created for vulnerabilities associated with a particular software or hardware. So we have six CVEs here, supposedly related to OpenSSH. If we take a look at the rule itself, we'll find that this is just based on a search query. And in this case, we're looking for vulnerabilities with the keyword of OpenSSH that are known to have exploits. This tag happens to come from uh, one of our sources. And if we open one of these entities, we can then see that each of these is a vulnerability focused on OpenSSH. Now we could further prioritize this search. There is other metadata we could use such as impact and exploitability scores provided by the vendor. We may want to include additional keywords to help filter this search as well. But this is a pretty manageable amount of uh, alerts, perhaps for uh, bigger software or more widely used software, there might be more to get through and we may wish to adjust our searches. From this dedicated view, we can now create a task for each of these entities. For example, I might want to assign this to one of my users. This built-in task capability can assign entities to platform users and then they will get a notification that they have a new task assigned to them. You can use this to uh, dictate sort of work going on within your team, dis distribute the work amongst different team members, and then track effort and also collaborate on the results of these tasks. With this task created, as other tasks have been created here as well, I can now use this to collaborate with Enrico on our investigation of this vulnerability, providing feedback here or on the entity or in some other ways that we'll see shortly when we discuss collaboration. With this task assigned, I'm now going to remove this from discovery. So I've essentially assigned this work and I'm going to remove it from the queue. And so we always have access to the full search tool. If we want to explore intelligence from different sources and perform general research, when we want to be notified about key threats that we're tracking, we can use discovery to create alerts matching our use cases. I have a few different rules configured here. For example, we have one for uh, ransomware attack notifications. This is a pretty uh, significant threat vector for a lot of our customers is notifying them when their supply chain or uh, part of their own organization has had a data breach 
or a supposed ransomware attack, and it's been announced by a, a key threat group. So some sources now provide uh, forum monitoring for this activity, and we can create an alert rule to tell us as soon as one of these uh, notifications includes us or one of our organizations, or perhaps somebody that we're collaborating with. The workflow would be the same, alert on any of these results, perhaps assign the work if we need to, and use this feature to explore new data as it's collected by the platform. For any intel that we collect as well, anything uh, within the data, like unstructured text, will also be uh, extracted. We can see for some of these, there's also MITRE attack techniques. In this case, in this case, most of these only have uh, data encrypted for impact, but larger reports will typically include more information. So in terms of prioritization, we've taken a look at alert rules based on search queries and then assigning tasks to users using the dedicated discovery view. This feature is critical in helping to filter through what is typically a large volume of Intel facing an organization and allow you to uh, notify and organize your work around key topics. You can create as many of these rules as you need to, and your users can all use this feature together. Now, next, I want to discuss collaboration, since we've touched on it already with prioritization, and we'll jump a little bit into some other features of the platform as well. So we often say at Eclectic IQ that we're the tip for analysts or we're focused on collaboration as a use case. And our goal is not to just be a vehicle for Intel to be shipped from one place to another. We're not just a browser for Intel to be viewed and then ticked off. We want to be able to provide analysts a place to create a knowledge base, to create investigations and save all of this activity uh, for future reference. And so we provide a few features for this. One of them is called the workspace. You can think of this as a folder to help you organize information. And these are typically used to focus around a key topic, for example, a vulnerability or a threat actor that you might be reviewing. Each of these workspaces can then be filled with recent investigations, tasks assigned to users, and key entities related to that topic. When you have multiple users in a platform, this can be very useful in managing data and focusing on specific use cases. Some simple examples would be creating workspaces for managing uh, data workflows or case management. And we often see users create workspaces for single threats, such as threat actors, vulnerabilities, and malwares. Uh, other organizations may wish to base them on their PIRs. It's very flexible to your needs, and you can create as many of these as you need to. We've touched on the graph tool briefly, another way that we can explore our data. But we can also save these graphs to workspaces to assist in uh, investigations and collaboration. So for example, if we're investigating uh, vulnerabilities and known exploits, maybe we've identified some key vulnerabilities that we want to do further research on. And we can save this sort of visual insight into the data to a workspace for quick reference later, rather than relying on list views, which are a little bit harder to pass. Now, if we look for a key entity, I want to find an example of a report which mentions uh, maybe some MITRE attack techniques. We can then discuss our next feature, which assists us with collaboration. So in my search results here, I have several different reports, um, all with MITRE attack technique metadata. In this case, these will come from either AlienVault or the Eclectic IQ feed. And for each of these reports, I may wish to uh, visualize these techniques. So these could be um, key actors or malwares or reviews of particular industry sectors. And these techniques may represent the um, typical techniques used by actors, or maybe we just want to understand change over time in what techniques are used by different threats. So we have a feature to allow us to visualize this. I can select multiple entities and add them to my attack analysis view. This allows us to take the metadata for each of those entities and then visualize it so that we can identify um, commonality, trends, uh, for example, a heat map of activity as well. If we visualized a single entity, such as an actor or a malware, we then get the value of seeing their kill chain from left to right. This tool is very useful for reporting or understanding the nature of a threat, and we can save and compare these over time as well. These analyses aren't just sort of visual. Uh, we can save these to the platform and provide some insights to them. For example, this might be my uh, alien vault analysis. 
So I might save this and then include some key details. We can also bring new entities into the scope so we can add additional information and visualize uh, and assess how they change the view as well. And this touches on a pretty key use case for a lot of our customers, which is the ability to identify the nature of a threat, the techniques that are used, and then move from uh, threat to how to mitigate or detect that threat. It also allows us to compare uh, commonality. For example, for command and scripting interpreter, we can see that most of the entities I selected are using this technique. So this is one of the more uh, popular techniques. It encompasses quite a lot of attacks that we see in the wild. We can also add annotations to any of these techniques that have been labeled here, allowing analysts to include additional insight and then save that with the analysis as well. These are then available for future reference. So if we just want to add some useful information to one of these layers that we've created, we can save it. And we then have access to all of the mitigations and detections provided by the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And we also support the other matrices for any customers who are supporting the mobile or ICS workflows as well. So in these situations, if you want to visualize techniques from these other families, the same workflows are available. And the platform will automatically extract this data from anything that you upload as well. So for the report that we uploaded earlier, those techniques were also extracted for us. For the report that was created here, our three techniques were made available. And as we save layers in this dedicated view, we can find previous analyses as well. So we compared a few reports in that example, but maybe I want to focus on a single actor and the TTPs that they used in a recent campaign. Here we're visualizing just a single entity. If I click on one of these techniques, we can see the associated report that this came from. And while the MITRE ATT&CK framework is no substitute for the specific details of an attack, we always recommend modeling out threats um, to include key details using attack patterns. The MITRE ATT&CK framework is very useful for reporting and general understanding of trends as well. Now there's two more sort of collaboration tools I would say that are available in the platform. Uh, one is actually creating data yourself. So in an example like the uh, data model I have here, it might be that we want to create novel intel to represent a new threat. Maybe it's something that we're researching ourselves, or maybe we got a report and we want to structure it in a more visual way to assist us with analysis in the future, or even just create single entities to add some more context and then relate them to intel that we've created. And we can also make use of these note entities to add basic information to any other entity in the platform. In the graph, these appear as entities. However, in the um, sort of primary view of an entity, we also have a dedicated notes view as well. So once again, we don't just want to consume Intel and then share it with our organization. We want analysts to be able to have a conversation and investigate Intel within the platform. So for any report or piece of intel that you're researching, we want you to be able to add your own insights and share those with your colleagues. Altogether, we have a lot of different ways to add and annotate information that we've collected, and this will help your analysts with labeling and managing their own knowledge base. In this example, we'll just say that we've reviewed this one, so we're adding a note to this report, and this will then show up in the search here we can look for, um, let me just go back to reports, and there's even a filter to look for the entities which we have notes already assigned to. So in terms of collaboration, um, we've discussed quite a few things, modeling intelligence yourselves, adding notes to any intelligence created in the platform, and then making use of dedicated features, whether it's the graph or the attack analysis viewer. The final way to sort of collaborate with other users would then be to create reports of your own as well. So, so far we've been focused on Intel reports from other sources, data that we've collected from our vendors, but we may also wish to create our own Intel. So in the course of an investigation, I may wish to write a report to capture my findings. Now the platform will assist you with this process. There is a built-in report editor to create report entities 
the advantage of doing this where there, uh, versus doing it in a silo, like a sort of SharePoint directory or Google Docs, is that when you've created a report, you can link it directly to Intel in your collection, and you can also use it in workflows directly from your Intel knowledge base. So the report editor provides uh, rich text edit capabilities. If I wanted to do something like a daily review, I can then include key information uh, from my findings. I can then make use of all of the tools available to me to help format my output, as well as create relationships to data within my platform. So if I say I've reviewed uh, recent C CS CVEs in my platform, I might then wish to use some of the tools to help me generate this content, review or change some of the content that I've already created. These tools just help me with uh, managing the text or creating new text, helping me to maybe adhere to style guides or SOPs for my organization. Once we're happy with this, or we decide to add some additional data as well, for example, I'll add a couple of CVEs that we've uh, researched recently. This is helping me to generate my report, automatically relate them to the data of interest. And I can then save this report to my knowledge base, and then it's available uh, alongside all of my other Intel. In this case, I'm going to save this as a member of the CCI analyst team. And since it's an internal document, I'm going to set TLP as Amber strict for now. I can always change this later. We also have the facility to create and save drafts within the platform. So if you're writing a report and you need to take a break and come back to it, or it will take more than um, a single session to get through the report, we can save this draft and then return to it later. I'll then look for any of the data that I've created. In this case, I'll look for anything that's come from the groups of the platform. We'll just see if we can find the reports. Here we've created a new daily review entity that mentioned those CVEs, and you can see it's created that link for us. So if we ever share this report or we want to collaborate on this report, users of the platform can find the related Intel that contributed to this document as well. Now, in terms of exporting, um, we would then eventually export this through either an outgoing feed or quickly export it here. So we have different tools available to help us get data out of the platform. One other way that we can create data, if we wish to speed up this process, in a situation like this one, I may have several entities where I want to generate a summary. Maybe it's multiple CVEs, maybe it's multiple threats that I've analyzed. I need to generate several of these. So this time, instead of writing the report myself, I can choose to add to a report. And this gives me an interactive workflow where I can use uh, external tools to help generate this content. So in this case, I'm gonna call this uh, a CVE summary. I'm gonna choose a custom template here so I have control over what's created. And I'm just gonna ask it to summarize the CVE and its exploits. This will let me use entities that I've highlighted and then generate an initial report. So a sort of boilerplate report from these entities and then relate it to my content. And this helps me get a sort of uh, jump start on creating report content. With this created, we'll find a new report is now available, linked to all of the entities that we just linked. And then we have a sort of initial summary already created for us. Now, the important thing here is that we may wish to make changes. So this is not a final entity. I can now add as much information as I want, or I can edit this report and make changes to the content. But it has saved me a lot of time in summarizing the initial data. And if I need to write this report for a particular audience, I can then bring this um, into the editor here and maybe make some changes using the built-in tools as well. Now, the last thing is to export data. So we've discussed how to sort of collaborate and create reports, but now we want to actually share this data uh, outside of our platform. Now, there are a few different ways to do this. We can create uh, artificial workflows to help us with things like reviewing and approving entities. We can create uh, manual exports at any time by choosing the export option and then turning this into a PDF. This allows me to save a lot of time if I wanna just quickly share a report that I've created. Otherwise, if I want to adhere to a workflow, I would use an outgoing feed to share this data. Now, outgoing feeds can be used to share data in any format. For example, we might wish to share uh, PDFs by email. So on the right side here, we have a feed configuration. 
And to summarize this, it's creating PDF documents and sending them by email. It's doing this roughly every hour. And then it's pulling the data from these two collections here. So as an analyst, if I want to share data through this feed, I just need to add it to one of these collections. And I'll find these options um, pretty much anywhere in the platform. If I choose something like this report and add to data set, I can then choose one of the data sets that we can see right over there from this list as well. So I've named these in such a way that they're easy to find, easy to be labeled. And so as an analyst, if I know I want to report this or I need to send something to the seam, for example, I can quickly find the right destination. The advantage of doing it this way is that this process manages the data that we export. So if I look for, if I add this to, uh, I'll just give this a TLP, we'll set it to uh, Amber Strict. I'll add this to one of my export workflows, for example, the manual reports one, and then we'll export this through the outgoing feed that we've created here. This will then find any of the entities in those data sets. It will turn it into a PDF for me. We can also view a history of logs. I had a failure there for some reason. We can see whether they were successful and what issues there may have been, and then verify whether these have been delivered. All very useful features for sharing initiatives where we want to validate and share intel. And it's not just PDFs by email. We can also share data in a variety of formats, whether it's specific technologies that you want to integrate with, like Seam or SAW, or generic formats that you wish to share, uh, such as CSV or PDF. And in all these cases, you can select something specific or generic from the list, provide the necessary information, and then automate this sharing initiative. These other two examples that I have here are for uh, indicator sharing, whether we want to produce CSVs to use with our SIEM, or if we want to host a taxi server on the platform, uh, which we support natively, we can use the platform to provide this service and then provide the credentials to our customers. Every integration that we have is built with Python, and this is designed to be extendable. So if there's a new technology that we need to integrate with, it's very easy to build these. It doesn't require any sort of core code changes. We can bolt on new functionality through these feeds. Now, I'm conscious I've been rambling for the majority of the, the webinar. I just want to pause there, um, leave a few minutes. Um, James, do we have any uh, questions or any other topics you want me to cover? Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so we've got a page full of questions here um, and we've got five minutes. So maybe I'll just uh, cherry pick a couple. First one is how does your platform handle unstructured data? Yeah, of course. So uh, I believe we covered this briefly um, early on. So if we want to bring unstructured data into the platform, we can either create data ourselves and just include it in the free text. So for example, if I wanted to bring an IP address in, uh, I can just include this in the free text of an entity or a file that I upload, and this will then be included, uh, extracted by the platform when I hit upload. So if I publish this entity now, we'll have a new indicator created and we'll find that this observable value has been extracted from the description. Um, and in this case, I even had an enrichment rule ready so it's enriched it automatically for me as well. Cool. Uh, next question. How would you integrate incident response workflows? Yeah, so for incident response, uh, we touched on this briefly at the start with the data model. Uh, we typically see integrations with SIEM, SOAR, or EDR technologies where we'll collect data called either sightings or incidents. So these are essentially alerts within your infrastructure or incidents that have been registered within your ticketing platform. And we can either send them to the tip as data. So you could create a new sighting or a new incident, include key information that you wish to uh, enrich or research. And then as it shows here, this will help us to find links to uh, additional intelligence. You can also do this at any time by creating data or using the API. And we typically see uh, customers use the discovery feature where we would then create a new rule for any new sightings or any new incidents that come into the platform. So I might create a rule here to support my IR workflows and just alert on any new sightings that come in. The next time a sighting enters the platform, uh, I'll be notified and I can then respond. And we can then take advantage of things like enrichment automation, 
where if there was a, a sighting and it included an IP or a file hash, we can create rules to automatically enrich that data with VirusTotal, Shodan, Microsoft Defender, or any other lookup services that you may be using in your organization. Okay, um, we're, we're about out of time. So I think uh, there's a few more questions which might take long to answer. So I think we'll follow up with answers to those questions. There's one quick question here asking, do we do free trials? And yes, of course we do. If you'd like uh, to test uh, the software that Ben has been showing you, then just contact me, james at eclecticiq.com or send an email to info at or sales at eclecticiq.com. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're gonna send a recording of this webinar to all the participants. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you all again for your time. And uh, we look forward to more webinars with you in the future. So I'm going to end the session now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Goodbye.